In this lesson, we're going to be talking a lot about atoms and molecules and actually compounds and ions. Anyway, we'll start by talking about the basic particles. Atoms are the smallest particle that retain the identity. And when we think of atoms, we think of them as being little spheres, little balls. And that's a fine way to think about them. They are basically round like that. So that particle is called an atom, as opposed to a molecule. A molecule has two or more atoms that are bonded together in some way. Those are the different particles. In the last lesson, we talked about different types of matter, and so I'm going to add that in here. There are elements, and let's add the picture for that. An element has only one type of atom, and it, they don't have to be just one atom, though. You can have two atoms that are bonded together. So this, those need to be joined. Uh, this is a molecule of the element nitrogen. That's still an element, and that is two. Let's look at compounds. Compounds have to have more than uh, two elements in fixed proportions. So something like this. That's carbon monoxide. And this business about fixed proportions means that um, having carbon and oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio, in other words, for every carbon there's one oxygen, is important because that determines the type of compound. I'll show you more about that in a second. Let's look at a chemical reaction. So what happens in a chemical reaction is that your atoms get rearranged. Those are two oxygens. So they change who they're bonded to. A um, couple things to notice. First of all, um, this is up here, this is carbon monoxide and this one is carbon dioxide. And they're both made with carbon and oxygen, but what I was saying about the proportions matter, these are very different compounds. Which one would you like to breathe a lot of? Carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide? They're very different. So that um, ratio does matter. Also, look at our chemical reaction. Um, before the reaction, there's one atom of carbon. After the reaction, there's one atom of carbon. Same with oxygen. The atoms do not um, get destroyed, and no atoms come out of nowhere. Nothing's created. So this kind of gets back to our conservation of mass, that no atoms are created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Let's test ourselves a bit here. We look at these. It asks which is CO2. So to find CO2, kind of like that last one I drew, I look for a molecule that has three atoms total, one carbon and two oxygen. So these letters aren't labeled, but we can see that the only one that could be CO2 is this one because it has one atom of one type and two of another type. While we have this up here, let's talk about um, elements versus compounds. Which of these are elements? I think these two are elements because they only have one type of atom. And these all look like compounds. Okay, so those are the types of matter. Let's ask another question. Which of these are atoms and which of these are molecules? There's only one atom, isn't it? Isn't there? There's this one right here is an atom. The rest of these are all molecules. because there's more than one atom present.
I know you've seen this a lot, so um, but see what you can remember. For each subatomic particle, the things that make up the atoms, we're going to talk about its charge, its mass, and where it is. For the charge, it's positive or negative or neutral. For the mass, um, really I want to know which one has almost no mass compared to the other two. And for where it is, I want to know inside the nucleus or outside the nucleus. What's the charge of an electron? Most people know that's negative. And we're going to put a number to it. We're going to call it negative 1. What about a proton? Pro, that sounds positive. It's positive. We're going to call it positive 1. And then neutron, that sounds neutral. What number would we use for neutral? Very good. Of the three, which one has almost no mass compared to the other two? It does have mass, but compared to the other two, not much. The electron has almost no mass compared to the other two. The other two are about 1 AMU. An AMU is an atomic mass unit. Which one of the particles is outside the nucleus? Okay, so protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, the electrons are outside the nucleus. There's a couple things we can do with this. First of all, I could ask, where is most of the mass located in the atom? Most of the mass is in the nucleus. Protons and ne neutrons are in the nucleus, that's where most of the mass is. Another thing I could ask is, what is the overall charge of the nucleus? The nucleus has the protons and neutrons, so it's positive. It's helpful to remember um, that the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus and they have all the mass because we'll talk about the mass number in a minute and that comes from protons and neutrons. Okay. Also, um, I want you to have an idea of the scale of this that um, an atom is actually a very, very small nucleus in a very large area where the electrons are. So the nucleus is pretty small compared to the overall size of an atom. I'm going to show you a couple of experiments that led to an understanding or discovery of some of the particles. I don't, I don't go into as much detail as some instructors do on this, but I do like to hit two famous um, experiments or setups. In this one, um, J.J. Thompson discovered and uh, determine some properties of the electrons, of electrons. So, um, charge plates, using a battery, this is a battery, there's a charge plate, a negative plate and a positive plate. And so, it was found that there seemed to be some kind of particle that traveled from the po negative toward the positive plate. So, by putting this little hole in here, those charged particles would just go on through. And um, so these charged particles, sometimes called a cathode ray, a stream of electrons, if they went through between these two plates, so here's another charged plate, negative and positive, these particles tended to bend or veer toward the positive one, which tells you that the particles or negative. So the cathode ray um, was made up by a special type of particles that was named the electron. So I'll say they're charged particles coming from the atom, the electrons. Let's look at another experiment. This, is, this has to do with the nucleus, the Rutherford gold foil experiment. In this experiment there is a lead block that's to block radiation except for in one little uh, hole in the front. In here is the radioactive material that releases alpha particles and so by having this one little hole we get a stream of alpha particles coming out. 
Here's another lead plate to kind of make sure that there's just a fine stream of these particles coming out. Um, ideally, you know, kind of one at a time or close to that, anyway, not too many. And so here's the piece of metal foil, like gold foil. Um, so what? it's very thin piece of foil. What you might expect is that the atoms are pretty solid, and so all of these flying particles would bounce kind of straight back. But that's not what is, was observed. Most of the alpha particles went pretty much straight through. They may have been off by a little bit of angle. Every now and then there was one that got bounced back um, at an angle like, like so. So this told you something about the nucleus because the nucleus is where all the mass is located and it tells you that the atom is not totally solid. Let's see how this worked. So here's the alpha particles coming in and you can see like this one that as it comes through it doesn't hit a nucleus most of the outside of the atom is empty space. The nucleus has all the mass, or most of the mass, and it's very small compared to the size of the atom. Look at these over here. So most of the mass is in the nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged, and that's based on the alpha particles being positively charged and how well they got repelled there were a lot of calculations involved in all of this, of course. The nucleus is very small compared to the overall atom size.